Hello and welcome to the Strawberry Squid Art Tutorial. Today we'll learn how to draw and paint this squid, which is based on a photo by Paul Kager. Here's what you need to make this squid. Watercolor paper, but if you don't have it, that's fine. You can use regular printer paper. Paint brushes, a pencil in pink, blue, and black markers or pens, red, yellow, purple, black, and white watercolor paint, something to use as a painting palette. I like to use old takeout container lids and something to put water in. Oh, and an eraser in case you make mistakes. We're gonna start out with our pencil and draw a tall cone shape. This will make up the part of the squid called the mantle. Next, let's draw a circle below the mantle. This will help us draw the squid's head later on. Let's start to black out the head by drawing a line between the mantle and the circle. Let's connect a curving diagonal line between the right side of the mantle and the vertical line we just made. And then curve around to meet the vertical line in a small loop. To make the sides of the head, draw some lines on either side of the circle. Make them curve slightly using the circle as a guide. Let's start on the arms. They may seem complicated to draw at first, so we'll draw them one at a time. Start with the arm on the front left side of the squid. Make it about one quarter of the thickness of the head. Make parallel wavy lines that come to a point at the tip of the arm. Now we'll make the front arm on the right side similarly to the one that we just made. The nice thing about drawing these arms is that you can position them pretty much however you want uh, since squid arms are very flexible and can take on many shapes. You can make them exactly how I did or draw them however you want to.
Squid actually have eight arms, um, but I could just see seven of them in the photo, so this one just has seven. I think the eighth one is probably behind the squid. Now let's add the two tentacles. They're longer than the arms, and they have a wider portion at the ends. Squid often use these to catch prey. Let's block out the side of the squid's head to make this head seem more three-dimensional. We can draw a curved, half-moon-like shape between the mantle and ending where the circle meets the side of the head. Within the shape you just drew, add a circular shape to make up the eye socket. Add three curved lines within the eye socket to make up the eye and the pupil. One cool thing about strawberry squid is they have eyes of two different sizes. The eye we're drawing here is the smaller one, but on the other side of the head they have a, a large yellow eye. Since the strawberry squid lives in the ocean twilight zone where there isn't much sunlight, some researchers think that it uses the large yellow eye to point upwards towards the surface of the ocean to spot prey or predators, and it uses the small eye to look downwards to search for bioluminescence. You can also add a very small circle to the pupil to make a spot for where we'll put a highlight when we make the painting later. Now let's draw the squid's funnel in the gap between the head and the mantle. Start by making a triangle and then make a small semicircle over the triangle. The squid uses the funnel to jet out water, which helps propel it through the ocean. Now let's make the squid's fins, which look kind of like butterfly wings, up on top of the mantle. These help the squid swim as well. To help the squid's arms look more three-dimensional, let's make curved lines starting at the top of the arm to help distinguish the upper side of the arm from the lower side. You can do this for all the arms that you can see both the bottom and the top of. Now let's make the little suction cups the squid use to hold onto their prey. Draw two rows of small circles on the underside of all of the arms.
from the side, the suction cups kind of look a little bit like little Lego nubs. On some of the arms, uh, you can see both the front and the side of the suction cups. So make one row of the suction cups circles and the other row of little Lego nubs. And of course, the sun started setting. Sorry about the weird shadows. Okay, so now that we've added all of the suction cups, let's start on the skin texture. Strawberry squid have both chromatophores, which the squid can use to change color, and photophores, which the squid uses to emit light. It might use the photophores to use light to communicate with other squid, or to camouflage against the lighter ocean surface. So now I'm just blocking out where the photophores are on the skin by drawing small circles uh, on the mantle with even smaller circles inside. They kind of look like mini googly eyes. Let's put these photophores on the squid's head as well as the mantle and the arms as well. Now I'm just going to clean up some of the lines with my handy dandy eraser and also erase the circle we used to block out the head. 
I'm also going to add a few more photo fillers around the eye. And now that our drawing is complete, yay! It's time to paint. I'm grabbing my red watercolor, but if you don't have watercolor, you can really use any kind of water-based paint. I'm just gonna add some of the red paint to my palette. Grab my largest brush. And get my brush nice and full of water. And we're going to create uh, what's called a wash. So basically, I'm just taking a little bit of red paint and sort of dampening it with the brush so that it's not too saturated, so that the color's not too bright. And then I'll just put this mix of water and paint right onto the squid's mantle. You can just pick up more paint as you go and add it to the wet surface of your paper and we're just gonna fill in this whole entire squid the arms the tentacles the uh, the fins the head everything really except the eye I'm gonna fill in with this this light pink wash Now I'm going to grab my yellow paint and using my larger brush again, let's grab some paint and some water and we're going to create sort of a highlight on the squid's mantle just by sort of spreading out the yellow paint in the center. So it sort of gives the squid more of a three-dimensional look. And we can do the same thing with the squid's head, just add some yellow right in the center of the head. So those undersides of the tentacles that we drew earlier by drawing those lines, let's grab some of our red paint and make it a little bit more saturated than our pink wash. So a little bit more paint to water, uh, paint than water. And we're gonna color in, or paint in the undersides of our tentacles with this more saturated reddish pink color. So anytime you see an underside of a tentacle, you can fill it in. This will make the tentacles look more three-dimensional and just give them a little more pop in the painting.
Now let's add some darker pink paint around that semicircle shape we drew around the eye uh, to also make the head look more three-dimensional as if there's um, a light source to the left of the squid and making a shadow kind of on the right side of the head. So just fill in that whole area other than the eye. Now let's take some of the slightly uh, darker pink paint and add it to the edges of the squid to add some more three-dimensionality. This is something in general, when you add, um, make the edges look darker, it sort of makes it look more three-dimensional, like it's coming out of the page at you. So we can do that to the mantle, as well as the head. And if you ever feel like uh, the lines you're painting are too harsh, like like when you put down some dark paint and then there's a, a stark line between that and a lighter yellow portion, just add some water to your brush and sort of blend it in. When using watercolors, you can often use water to, to blend everything together. Now we're going to grab our purple paint and add it to our palette. And with this purple paint we can get some even darker shadows. So let's grab our large brush again and add some purple shadows to the side of the head around the eye. You don't want it to be too dark, so make sure you have some water on your brush when you're doing this but you just want to add a little bit more shadow. And you can do the same thing to the side of the mantle. Just picking up a little bit of purple paint as you go and letting it sort of blend into the wet surface of your paper. Let's add some purple to the undersides of the tentacles as well to make them a little bit darker so that there's more contrast between them and uh, the upper sides of the tentacles. Now let's grab a smaller brush and our black paint. And after wetting your brush, grab some black paint on there and we're going to zoom into the eye. So let's fill in that black pupil area um, and filling in everything in that pupil except for that highlight we blocked out earlier. So that little dot is going to turn into a little white highlight. So that makes the eye uh, appear shiny and like, like it, it's a sort of a three-dimensional circle or sphere shape rather. Now you can grab your sort of uh, medium small brush and um, get a little bit of sort of a, a pinkish dusky rose color on it by getting a little bit of red, a little bit of purple, and uh, mixing it with water, and then you can add that to the sort of... If this was a human eye, it would be sort of the white portion of the eye, but in a squid, in the picture, it looks sort of more purple, purplish-reddish. So add it to that part of the eye. And then uh, you can rinse your brush off and grab some yellow paint and add it to what, if it was a human eye, would be the iris of the eye, so to make that sort of a yellowish color. Then grab your uh, other brush again, the one we use for the black paint, and using black, sort of uh, outline the squid's eye with a, a thin, uh, thin black outline, as well as outlining the edge of the eye to 
differentiate it from the eye socket. Grabbing our large brush again and some more purple and a little bit of red paint mixed together along with some water. Uh, I'm just adding some additional shadows to the side of the squid. And you can kind of do this to whatever you think looks good. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here, but I just wanted the tentacles on the right to be a little bit darker. And now I'm just adding um, a little bit more shadow to some of the front tentacles, or front arms, I should say. Now we can grab our white paint, and we're going to use this to fill in the texture of the skin. So we're going to grab our littlest brush and um, for those circles we made around the photo photophores earlier, let's just put some white paint uh, to fill them in. You can fill the circles in the same way on the, the head as on the mantle. Now let's fill in the little photophores around the squid's eye. <laughs> I didn't do a super good job of this, my brush is kind of messed up. But it doesn't have to be perfect, you just want to get sort of a, a sense of texture. Now you're going to wait a little bit for your squid to dry because it's sort of hard to work with a very wet surface of paper. And once it's dried all the way, uh, you want to grab your blue marker or a pen or whatever you have lying around the house and um, just outline the squid to give it sort of a pop of color and to sort of bring the, the piece together. This is an optional step, you don't have to outline it. but. I think it looks nice, and you don't have to use blue as well, you can use any color that you like. Now I'm just sort of outlining um, around the the head. Now 
and you can outline all of the arms and the tentacles as well. and outline every little nub of the suction cups using your blue marker. Now we can use our same uh, blue marker to add the squid's photophores. So I'm just doing this by adding some blue dots uh, to the end of the mantle, and then also blue dots to the insides of the little white circles we painted to make them kind of look like those googly eyes we drew earlier. And you can just fill all of those in on the mantle and on the squid's head and arms as well. Now I'm going to grab my pink marker and add some chromatophores. So pretty much these are just little dots all over the squid. I'm just adding them to the mantle um, and you can pretty much put these <laughs> however you want. Um, I'm just putting them wherever I think looks good. I'm going to add some to the space between the mantle and the head. And I'll just add some of the chromatophores to the head and to the arms.
For a final touch, I'm going to take a black marker and um, just sort of touch up the eye and make those lines a little bit crisper because they didn't uh, come out as sharp as I wanted them to with the paint. But you don't have to do this if it came out better than <laughs> it did for me. And there you have it, your strawberry squid uh, multimedia art piece. And I'm sure yours looks amazing. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you tune in again. Bye!